that. Also, um, Knox is, we're not going to send out the weekly emails like we have been. Uh, if you are, haven't subscribed to Knox YouTube, then we suggest you send that up so that you get up all the updates and the announcements and whatever there. All right, let's come to worship as we read together the call to worship. How blessed are we when we meditate on God's teachings and when we desire God with our whole hearts. Let us praise God with active minds and eager spirits, for we are God's servants working and praying together. So let us worship God and praise God's holy name. Let us seek God's path and listen for God's call. Let's stand and praise God in song with Jesus. Let's pray together. Hear us, Lord, as we surrender our hearts and minds to you. Transform us, change us, and make us new as you call us your children. You are the light of minds that seek to know you. You are strength for those who seek to serve you. You reveal truth to those who search for you. Today, as we worship, we pause in your presence, resting from our work and responsibilities, from our worries and distractions. We come to enjoy your presence and praise you for the gift of life in Christ and in creation. Receive our prayers and praise this day for we open our hearts in love and loyalty to you, O oh God, our all in all. Amen. Let's continue praising God with uh, music as we sing, uh, This is My Father's World. Uh, this time of Thanksgiving and offering, I bring your attention, and I know you're all aware of um, PWSND, World Development in the World, and I received an email from um, the main office that I get. And of course, first thing on the list was Turkey and Syria and talking about the earthquake there. And I'll just read you the b brief um, message that was there and, and it's basically the same as what has been in the papers and whatever but uh, it does tell of the action they are already taking there uh, and as we think about offering and um, the mission of february for pws and d you might keep turkey and syria in your minds a magnitude 7.8 earthquake followed by a multitude aftershocks and a second earthquake has caused widespread destruction in southeast Turkey and northern Syria with a growing death toll of over 22,000 people and many more injured or missing amid the thousands of collapsed buildings. Presbyterian Church Canada partner the National Evangelical Evangelical Synod of Syria and Lebanon is responding to the disaster as best it can, as harsh winter conditions have made access to adequate shelter and aid more difficult. But of all the more critical for all those intentionally displaced by the disaster, Presbyterian World Service and Development is also responding to the situation through partners at ACT Alliance. Information on how you can support response efforts is available on the uh, Presbyterian Church of Canada website, and I do have it here if anybody's interested to see the updates as they go along. So as we think of the people in Turkey and around the world that are displaced, or are hungry, that need shelter. Lord, we are so blessed here. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as you set choices before us, we are able to bring life and blessing to others. 
We can give our gifts to you, Lord. You enable us to make a choice for life and choose to bless others in your mighty name. We trust you, God, that you will bless the choices we make today. Lord, you are gracious and generous. We bring these gifts to you with thanksgiving. Bless them and surprise us by all the Holy Spirit can accomplish with them. Bless our lives too, Lord, so that our choices will always honor you for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, good morning. Is everyone doing great? Is everyone doing great? Yeah. Right? I mean, God is so good. And sometimes, I, I don't know, I think it's something after COVID, we've, we've all kind of fell into this humdrummy sort of life. And you know what? God is good because we've come through a lot and the sun is shining and the Lord is working in our hearts and we keep learning and moving toward him. And that is worth celebrating in the midst of everything else that's going on in our life. There is joy in the Lord. Let's, let's come to him in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, what joy you bring us, not because of circumstances, because, man, we can always make a big long list of what's not right, but because of your great love toward us. Father, it's, uh, as we just heard, it's just such a privilege that we as a Presbyterian church already have people in Syria. And we see on the news a great outpouring towards Turkey, but uh, Syria is a tougher country, Lord. And we're so grateful that we have partners in place. And uh, Lord, as, as we give our gifts to Presbyterian World Service and Development and through things like the Food Grains Bank and ACT Alliance, Lord, that people may find warmth, shelter, housing, and food. Um, we're so thankful, oh God, that these things are in place and that your grace can go out and meet the brokenness that is there. Lord, we recognize in our own lives, um, while we struggle, while we um, are challenged by health concerns, by caring for others that we walk with day by day who need special care, uh, carrying on our hearts those that are going through health concerns or who are mourning. Lord, there are so many whom we journey with. And we ourselves have so many experiences. But we look to you. And we know your goodness and your promises and your love. Lord, we, we watch television shows or whatever, and, and we see that things aren't right in people's lives. But then, you know, the Hallmark movie shows us that when and where there is love, everything else is taken care of. And so we recognize that you are love in all of these instances and that you encourage us and give us hope and we know that we are secure. And Father, we thank you this morning that we can reflect for a while through your word on the promises of baptism and, and what that means to us. And um, how we reflect and respond to your incredible gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you that you have said that you are our Father and we are your children, and that you care for us no matter how messed up we are. And, and we can look back at the past week and we can see where we've been impatient, where we've made choices more for ourselves than to serve others, where we've thought mean things, perhaps even said or did things that weren't so nice. And when we see you in all of your glory through creation and through your word, we're humbled because it makes us so aware of how painfully imperfect we are. But we thank you that you are the God of love, the God of redemption, the one who shows us that we're not better than anyone else and we're not worse than anyone else. 
but we are all in need of you. And, and so we thank you for your incredible grace that flows over us. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, on this service today. May your spirit open our ears and our hearts, our eyes, that we may receive your word and respond with praise and thanksgiving. And may our worship be acceptable to you, to the glory of our almighty God and Father, and for the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite Brian forward to read our scripture passage this morning. First Samuel 3, 1 Samuel 3, 1-4a. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of the God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I may have shared this little story with some of you, but on our anniversary last spring, Henry and I were given a gift card uh, from his family to like a really nice restaurant, and, and they were generous. And so we went out for dinner. And we, we sat there and we thought, oh, you know, like we hardly ever go to a place like this. Like, let, why don't we put some of our own money into it? And so we went for the whole full course meal and we bought a, a, a bottle of wine that we would otherwise never buy. And we just had this wonderful dinner together. And then the check came and we both went, where's the certificate? And you're looking at the bill going, <laughs> a little more than we ever would have spent. But we had to pay for it. The fact is the gift certificate still has 100% of that gift on it. And, well, we'll see what happens. Did you know? that 45% of gift cards go uncashed, and that in Canada, and as far as I know, this statistic is from 2019, um, $17 million in Canada alone that have been uncashed through gift certificates. <laughs> it's what? No, I think it was a million. But, you know, it, it was a lot. It's a lot. I know analogies only go so far, but uh, in Car Luke this morning, we had a baptism, so you're, you're, you're hearing the baptismal kind of service, but it's always good to be reminded of our baptism. Here, we, we do both. We, al we allow for adult baptism, but we also have a strong sense of a covenant God who does infant baptism and calls us when we're children and at that time in baptism God provides a sign and a seal of his forgiveness of his fatherhood towards his children as a promise of salvation it's a done deal it's like a gift card guaranteed that that's what this card has for you and I through baptism, we're washed from sin into forgiveness, from death into life. But the thing is, not everyone cashes in on the gift card, so to speak. Like, like any parent who raises their children, they, they want to develop their children and grow them in a secure environment. And, and like any parent, God doesn't want children that just go through the motions and say, yeah, I'm part of that family. Or just obey and say, yes, yes, I'll do, I'll do. No, God reaches out because he wants a relationship. And we see this in our story, four long points. That'll take you way past lunchtime today. No, just kidding. First, some children reject God's promises. 
Now we talked a little bit about uh, Hophni and Phineas last week. We introduced them, these two Levite priests who, with the tribe of Levi, through Aaron, the brother of Moses, God came and he gave this kind of promissory note, this, this certificate that said, I promise that your family will always have priests to serve in my temple. But as we read, and if we read a little more in chapter 3, we read that Hophni and Phinehas did not respond to God's promise at all. They were not priests. They dressed like priests, they looked like priests, they served at the temple, but they literally slept around. And they literally desecrated the sacrifices by taking the best meat for themselves rather than offering it to the Lord. And so there's this consequence. We read in verse 1, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. I mean, sometimes our first instant, our first reaction might be, oh, God wasn't talking to anyone. But I wonder if we were to step back and think, but who was listening? You see, Hophni and Phinehas weren't listening. They were doing their own thing. And so because they weren't hearing from God, they couldn't share the word of God with his people. They neither listened nor obeyed. As a result, God says, I will remove them from the priesthood. It's hard being a parent. I I tried it five times over. I've had a hit, miss, you know. Some children, when they grow up, can be belligerent or uncontrollable. I'm not saying mine are, but some are disrespectful, I don't need you, you're not my mom and dad, run away, do their own thing, cut the family off. And yet, I would have to say that any parent, regardless of how their children respond, would still say, but I love my child. And would at any moment, if that child returned to them, embrace them and welcome them back and say, man, it's good to have you home. That love never stops. So children, you and I, children of God, do we hear God call? Do we hear his word? Well, truth is, and that's the second point, people can hear God but not recognize that it's God. If we were to read a little further in the text, we would read that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So he's this little boy who's being trained up in the temple. He's about, we're thinking about seven or eight years old at this point. God is always speaking, even to us, through his word, through prayer, through the church, through others, through creation, through our consciousness, through our thoughts. The question is, do we situate ourselves such that we actually hear God? You see, I I recall um, one time growing up, and I don't know how old I was, maybe three, four at the most, and was in church with my parents and got separated from them during coffee hour. And and it was a much larger church. And I'm I'm going among this sea of big people going, Mom, Mom, and and I'm panicking. I can't find her anywhere, but I'm focused on just finding her, and I'm running around like crazy. And then finally someone said, Just calm down and listen. And then I could hear it. My mother's voice above the crowd. Why? Because I knew her voice. But I had to situate myself to hear it. Samuel situated himself to hear from God. Here's a little boy. He could have slept anywhere in a bed, but he chose to sleep by the Ark of the Covenant in the temple. And and in those days, that's as close to God as you can get. As God's children, we need to position ourselves so that the God who is speaking, his words will reach our ears and we can hear. It says, no, Samuel doesn't know the Lord yet. He's, he's growing in knowing. Like, like any relationship, you grow in knowing. I, I went to the bank on Tuesday, and the cashier said, oh, how's your daughter doing in England? 
And, and she remembered the last time, you know, two years ago, that the two of us had come in and organized her banking for when she was moving. Now, that cashier remembers that incident, but she doesn't know me. She doesn't call me up and ask me for coffee. No closer friends or, or my, my husband or my children or, you know, people in the church will say, how are you doing, really? Can I pray for you? Tell me a little bit more about how things are going in your life. There's a difference of an acquaintance of saying, yeah, I know God. And this idea that we know God and grow in that relationship and allow him to speak to us and speak to him. It's situating ourselves. It's reciprocal. Well, Samuel hears God calling but he doesn't recognize his voice. So three times, Samuel hears his name. Samuel, Samuel. And he goes, well, that voice is, I don't know that voice. So he runs to Eli, thinking maybe it got muffled in between the walls of his bedroom or something. He goes, well, Eli, here I am. And Eli goes, ah, I didn't call you. And finally, Eli goes, you know what, Samuel, I, I think it's the Lord that's calling you. Because that's the only other voice that could be in the temple. So the next time he calls you, you say, here I am, Lord, speak. Well, and that's the third point. Mentors help children hear and recognize and respond to God's voice. Eli realizes and guides Samuel that it's God's voice. He, he's been mentoring him to be a priest, and now he's realizing he needs to mentor him into this relationship with God. And that kind of Christian mentorship is vital. Mentors share their faith. They help us discern where God is working in our life. Sometimes we can't see it for ourselves. Mentors share stories and testimonies. You know what God did in my life? I believe God can do that for you too. The mentors are parents, grandparents, godparents, friends, teachers, preachers. Anyone in the church can mentor someone else. There was a comic strip recently and it showed a little boy who comes out of bed and he goes to his mom and he says mom I've been counting sheep but I can't fall asleep and his mom picks him up and puts him back to bed and three times he comes out and finally his mom says do you remember when grandma was over what she said when you came out of bed and he said yeah she said stop counting the sheep and start listening to the shepherd. And he fell asleep. Do you hear God calling? Because the good shepherd is talking to you. Well, fourth, to cash in on God's gift is to use it. To actually come to God and give him that certificate, that, that promise we're to humbly come to God and position ourselves for a relationship by listening and obeying God. Now, all humans, we have to confess, have selective healing, hearing. It's, it's not just married men that have that problem. <laughs> when it comes to listening to God, Isaiah prophesies in chapter 6 that God says, My people are ever hearing but never understanding ever seeing, but never perceiving. You know, an example of this, I'm, I'm driving my car and, and another car comes and he like swerves and I almost miss him. And then you go and tell a story and you go, well, it was a, a black car, maybe a sedan, or maybe it was an SUV. And I don't know if there were two people or three people. You see, I, I saw what happened, but I didn't let anything else register. I didn't perceive. And God is saying so often, my people do the same thing. That is, they know about God, but his voice flies in one ear and out the next. I don't know how many of you remember the movie or, or even the musical Fiddler on the Roof. That's a great movie. We should all watch it someday. It's so fun. Tradition. <laughs> But Tavier comes to his wife and ever so sweetly says, do you love me? And she responds, well, yeah, of course I love you. I'm married to you. 
I, I cook for you, I clean for you, I raise your children, I, I bring in wood, I keep the fire going on. And Tevye comes back to her and he goes, but do you love me? You see, it wasn't about knowing him. It wasn't just about doing things for him. It was he needed to know there was a relationship, that it was reciprocal. In the story where Jesus feeds the 5,000, the people, you know, come and the disciples and they say, man, everybody's hungry, like we're praying to you, feed us. And, and Jesus does. And what happens afterwards is a whole whack of people just leave. They got what they needed and they left. But then there's a whole set of disciples that press in closer to Jesus. And he asks them this question, aren't you going to leave? And they respond, no because we know that you have the words of life. Children, do you hear God call? To move beyond just knowing about God or naming that there's a God out there somewhere or, or knowing your baptism and what it means and how to respond to it. See, Samuel spent time with God so that he could grow and know him, and he became one of the greatest prophets. Well, Henry and I still have a wonderful gift card waiting for us. We refuse to be one of the 45% who don't cash in on it. Maybe we won't go as extravagant just in case we forget it again. But the guarantee is still there. That card is still waiting for us. God has promised each of you in your baptism, he's there for you. And you have all the good gifts that Christ died for, that Christ laid his life down for. You have received the salvation of God, but you can also choose to never cash it in. It's guaranteed. But will you walk with it? Will you draw near? Will you hear the shepherd's voice? Will you respond? Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for oh, your incredible love toward us. That for many of us, even before we understood, you worked in the hearts of our believing parents who said, I dedicate my child to God. Just like Hannah and Elkanah dedicated Samuel to you that we would be children who would be mentored and raised in faith. What an incredible gift. And so we honor and thank you for our parents who brought us to that place. And for those of us who came into faith a little later and were baptized as adults, we thank you that you moved in our hearts and you called us toward yourself. We thank you that in baptism we are reminded that we have moved from death to life, from sinfulness to forgiveness, that we have been given this promise, this guarantee of salvation and eternal life, and yet, Lord, we know so often we forget about this wonderful gift. And so we pray anew and afresh that you would draw our hearts to respond to this wonderful act of grace. And may we in our hearts each day see you at work in our lives and in the lives of others that we can share about it, that we might perceive. And may we hear your word and share it with others so that we might all understand. We pray, Father, for your blessing day by day as we seek to grow as your children, knowing that we are forever loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's respond with a song from, um, written by Paul Belouche, The Same Love. Children of God, Today, when you hear the Good Shepherd's voice, don't harden your hearts, but seek him with your heart, mind, and soul, and turn and repent that you may receive the words of eternal life. Go then in the peace of God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>